so now we are going to start the front of thigh introduction and also the surface landmarks so if you see the front of the thigh it is uh, actually beginning from the uh, hip joint and up to the knee joint so this is all the front of the thigh compartment and it is mainly having a superficial fascia next if you remove it you will get the deep fascia and of course in the superficial fascia it is mainly containing a big vein which is called as great saphenous vein so you can see here this is the great saphenous vein which is the biggest vein in this superficial fascia and also they have some cutaneous nerves and vessels you can see different cutaneous nerves here and also there are different cutaneous vessels over here these are all the present in superficial fascia and also of course superficial lymphatics and lymph nodes all these are present. the upper third of thigh uh, mainly if you see the upper third of the thigh over here this region so it immediately contains a femoral triangle this here it forms a femoral triangle of course we'll discuss it in a, another part about femoral triangle uh, and the middle third carries the femoral vessels through adductor canal. The front of thigh also have as four headed muscle like quadriceps femoris, iliopsoas in upper most region, adductor muscles on medial side. Of course, adductor muscles will be on the medial side. And femoral hernia occurs. It will mainly occur in the upper medial region of front of thigh. So, if there is any femoral hernia, you can expect it over this region. So now we will understand what are the surface landmarks. First one is iliac crest. So actually in this diagram it's not mentioned but iliac crest will be here. You know that iliac crest so anteriorly it has anterior superior iliac spine and posteriorly it has posterior superior iliac spine. So here will be iliac crest and it's anterior superior iliac spine. So iliac crest is thick and it's curved bony margin forming laterally the lower margin of the waist. It is forming the lower margin of the waist and if you remember on the iliac crest we also have a tubercle over here that is called as tubercle of iliac crest. So tubercle of iliac crest is a low bony prominence situated on outer lip of iliac crest so if for example if this is iliac crest this is the anterior superior iliac spine then on the outer lip on the middle you will have the uh, tuberosity tubercle of iliac crest and next coming to the fold of groin so this area is called the it forms the fold of groin the fold of groin is shallow curved groove which separates the front of the thigh from anterior abdominal wall and it represents a flexion crease of thigh and it overlies the inguinal ligament actually inguinal ligament will be present over here so overlying it will be the groin area and especially in the flexion of uh, the front of thigh you can observe that folds in the groin area so this will extend from anterior superior leg spine to pubic tubercle and the downward convexity of ligament is mainly due to pull exerted by fascia lata so actually you will have a fascia lata of the thigh about that also we'll discuss next let's come into pubic tubercle of course if you remember pubic tubercle will present on the pubic bone of hip bone so pubic tubercle is small bony projection felt at medial end of fold of groin pubic symphysis is formed in medial plane between the right and left pubic bones for example uh, this is a uh, right side of the thigh then here will be the right side of medial on the medial side will be pubic symphysis and on left side also medial side will be pubic symphysis so pubic symphysis will be somewhere over here so these are all the locations surface landmarks where you can find this structures next coming to the pubic crest the pubic crest is short bony ridge between the pubic tubercle and pubic symphysis so pubic crest is uh, a bony ridge between the pubic tubercle and pubic symphysis if we see our videos of uh, pubic bone then we can understand about the pubic crest next coming to greater trochanter of femur uh, of course femur bone will be it's the longest bone of the thigh region so femur bone uh, especially its greater trochanter lies in hand breadth below the tubercle of iliac crest so just below the tubercle of iliac crest you'll get the greater trochanter on the anterior side forming a wide prominence just in front of hollow one side of hip and the upper margin of trochanter lies about same level as pubic crest so upper level of the trochanter is along with the same level of pubic crest and the mid inguinal point for example if you draw a line here then the mid inguinal point 
lies midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis so between the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis the point in middle is called as mid inguinal point in the femoral artery the head of femur lie beneath mid inguinal so back back of mid inguinal point we can see the femoral artery and also head of femur so femoral artery and also head of femur bone can be felt at mid inguinal point that is between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis and next coming to patella or kneecap this bony prominence uh, which is forming a knee joint between the femur tibia and fibula this is called as patella or kneecap the patella or kneecap is the largest sesamoid bone always remember whenever there is sesamoid bone uh, there will be some uh, tendons along with it so this sesamoid bone is formed in a tendon of quadriceps femoris so it's a largest sesamoid bone of body uh, developed in tendon of quadriceps femoris it is easily seen and felt in front of knee and it can be moved freely in full extens in fully extended knee next coming to the tibial tuberosity so just below the patella or kneecap you can find the tibia bone tibia you know it's a medial bone so just uh, on the prominent there will be prominence on the anterior side of the tibia that is called as uh, uh, tibial tuberosity so due to that tibial uh, tibial tuberosity there is a ligamentum patellae which is going from the patella bone to the tibial tuberosity and it will get inserted over there so this represents the uh, ligamentum patellae extending from apex of patella to tibial tuberosity and it represents the tendon of quadriceps femoris which can be felt best in half flex so if you half flex your uh, thigh if you half flex your thigh you can easily feel the quadriceps femoris tendon in that tendon only our largest sesamoid bone that is a patella or kneecap is situated so now coming to the medial and lateral condyles of femur so for example you can see in this diagram this is the medial condyle of the femur and this is the lateral condyle of the femur uh, so on the medial side of the femur uh, of course uh, for the both condyles of medial and lateral condyle of femur there is attachment of tibia uh, to form a large bony masses at the sides of knee so the most prominent points on the sides of femoral condyles are called medial and lateral epicondyles so now if you see in this diagram even now you can palpate in your body on your thigh on the medial side and lateral side the most prominent point is called as medial epicondyle and on the lateral side the point which can be palpated is called as lateral epicondyle so this epicondyle suggests uh, the bony prominence which are present on medial and lateral sides of the condyles of femur and next coming to vastus medialis which forms a fleshy prominence above the medial condyle of femur so always remember according to the name vastus medialis in the in the muscle name only you can find vastus medialis then it is getting inserted on the medial side of your thigh so it forming a fleshy prominence so if you see this side the fleshy prominence on the medial side of our thigh is mainly because of vastus medialis muscle and next coming to the oh uh, yeah so this vastus medialis is above the medial condyle of femur it is above the medial condyle so here will be the medial condyle of femur so just above it here this side this all fleshy fleshy side of your anterior compartment of thigh is mainly because of vastus medialis muscle and <clears throat> particularly you can feel it in extended knee as in as shown now in this diagram you can see the knee is extended so you can easily feel on your medial side of the thigh the vastus medialis next coming to the adductor tubercle adductor tubercle is actually a bony projection which is uh, from the uppermost part of medial condyle of femur so it is also on the uppermost part of medial condyle of femur so here somewhere over here will be the adductor tubercle so this uh, is where uppermost of middle condyle to which the tendon of adductor magnus is attached so always remember the adductor compartment muscles will attach on the middle side because they need to adduct your thigh right uh, so to palpate the tubercle yeah so to palpate the tubercle flex the knee partly and note the wide shallow groove that appears posterior to mass of vascular medials so now we can feel it on the anterior compart anterior most compartment you feel the vascular medials just posterior to it you will feel the adductor magnus right so it is also a fleshy fleshy uh, muscle just back to your 
vastus medialis okay next the tendon of adductor magnus is felt in this groove and the tendon can be traced down to adductor tubercle now coming to the skin of thigh the skin of thigh in the region around the pubic symphysis is studded with hair yeah of course uh, here over this region uh, just side to groin on the medial side you will see that your thigh region is studded with hair and the presence of few stitches indicate the embalbin so embalbin is not so important so we can leave the embalbin so by this we have completed the surface landmarks of front of thigh next we will start with the superficial fascia